in and I'll be walking you through some really simple basics of graphic design and we are going to also dive into the workspace of Illustrator and the tools of Illustrator. So first off, foundation graphic design is understanding the difference between vector artwork and raster artwork. You may or may not have ever heard of that before. Um, it all ties back into the Illustrator program or the Photoshop program, um, which it also may or may not have ever heard about. Illustrator, which is the first program we're going to discuss, builds artwork based on the concept of vector-based drawing. And what that means is that kind of like if you've heard the word vector before, you may have heard it in your geometry class in high school. And it's really the same concept. It, it builds out an artboard similar to an X, Y geometry uh, graph. And it builds artwork based on points of that graph. So it's really all based around math. Um, curves, polygons, and points and lines, just like in geometry. Vector-based, similar to geometry, it's all about math, points, lines on that X and Y. The alternative is Photoshop-based artwork, which is referred to as raster-based. I'm going to dive more into that. Um, but the basic concept of that is raster base uses pixels. You've probably heard of pixels. Those are tiny little squares. I'm going to pop over into Photoshop. Those are tiny little squares that get allotted color. And depending on how many tiny little squares for your resolution, so if your resolution is really low, you may only have 72 little squares per inch, or if your resolution is extremely high, you may have 300 tiny little squares in one single inch. So those little squares make up the look of an image. In theory, it's just a bunch of tiny little squares shoved up next to each other. Um, but in, in reality, those squares, if you zoom in, you can really start to see those squares. So you can see right now I've moved over into Photoshop and you can tell that. Um, I'm on a Mac. I'm also working on a Mac. I'm not on a PC, so you may notice some differences. But when I zoom in, you can see those squares. So notice that when I'm zoomed out, which I'm doing Command plus to zoom in, and Command minus to zoom out, when I'm zoomed out, it looks smooth, clear, clean, beautiful. When I zoom in, I can see each of those tiny little squares that made up that single circular eye. Same thing on a television, you know, old televisions used to be able to really see these squares. That's why things looked a little more blurry. We're getting a lot more squares, a lot more pixels on our television. So things are getting more clear. There's a lot more little squares shoved in next to each other. So um, it's not as obvious that they're there. So back to Illustrator. Um, and you notice it looks just like the same smiley face. I can, I'm in back in Illustrator. No, it looks just the same. You can build artwork in both programs, but there's very specific artwork you should and should not build in each program. What I consider more graphic, more sharp lines, uh, blocks of color, logos, type, things like that, you would build those in Illustrator. It's going to be a lot more clean. It's going to be some of the benefits of that are and here when I zoom in, I'm doing Command Plus just like I did over in that Photoshop file. Notice it's still smooth. So scaling up or down in Illustrator when you have these uh, these shapes is going to be a lot better versus Scaling up and down when you're in Photoshop. You can see those lines. Um, 
also your file size, just your basic file size. How many of you have run into issues when you're trying to email a file over to someone and it says, oh, file too big. So file size is really important. And if you continue with a career or even a hobby in graphic design, understanding your file sizes, how to get them smaller when you need to, how to keep quality as high as possible, and how to manipulate those file sizes when you need to is really, really important. So Illustrator is always going to have a smaller file size than Photoshop. Photoshop, it takes a lot for it to memorize each of these little squares and where they go and which piece of color goes into that. Um, and and then, like I said before, it's easier to scale up or scale down versus Illustrator or versus Photoshop, where you'll be able to see those differences. So, the benefit though of Photoshop, I'm not not knocking on Photoshop by any means, is Photoshop's really for its namesake. It's for photos, and we'll dive into that in another lesson. But Photoshop's foundation of this software is based around building beautiful photographs and editing photographs and and compiling images together like true photographic images um the downside is those images are huge files it's almost impossible to just regular email a photoshop file over to someone because it's going to be large um so understanding those trade-offs is really important so again photoshop is raster it's pixels, it's square, uh, it's harder to scale up and down, and it's larger file size, and um, you can get pixelation, but you can do amazing stuff with photos in it, versus Illustrator, which is vector, Illustrator, vector, vector like your geometry class, um, with math. And because of that, it's a lot cleaner, it's a lot smaller files, um, it's easy to scale up and down and maintain a really, really crisp edge. So I hope that makes sense. Um, next, we're going to kind of dive into, you're already looking at it, but the workspace of Illustrator. And there's a lot that goes into this, so I'm going to kind of hop around and eventually I'm going to show you a few other files that, that kind of show some different things. But um, the basic concept of Illustrator, basic workspace of Illustrator is you've got your control panel. You'll hear this top, very top little portion. Not this, not this, not this. Just this top portion referred to as a control panel. That's very important. You'll also hear a toolbar. You'll also hear windows. These are all windows. I get that it just looks like a jumbled mess right now, but they're all very important. Understand that because whether you're listening to myself or you're listening to some other lesson from another instructor or you're trying to find something on Google or YouTube, understanding the proper verbiage of things is really going to help you um, master the skills. So control panel is up at the top. Tool panel on is typically on your left side, uh, and windows are on your right side. Now, your windows end up here in your tabs. You can see there's tons and tons of windows. Look at all those. They're not all open. Only the ones with the check marks are the ones that are open over here. Um, so sometimes someone may say, hey, go to your color window and you're like well i don't even know where that is it doesn't look like it's open you can always go up to window hit color it's gonna pop up over here and it was already open but just to kind of show you or let's see if one's not that would be a good one um hmm, type's always a good one although it's typically open yeah i can see all those are open so windows are over here or you can always find them here now tools that's it you have these tools the next space that's very important is understanding your artboard and file tabs. So right now, what you're looking at is I have three tabs of files open, meaning I have three files. I have one file called Vector Smiley Face. That was where I was showing you Vector. I have a tab over here from some students' artwork that I'm going to show you, uh, kind of dive into a little bit more in a minute. 
and then I have another tab, and I'm going to show you some differences with vector and raster in that tab in a little bit. So I have three tabs. It's very common for students to get confused, or anyone learning this, to get confused and not know where their file is. Uh, if you have so many files open, you can even see this little arrow over here. And there's my three. One's untitled, silly me. Uh, one is Dylan Hadlock, awesome student, shout out. Um, and then there's that vector. So you can see a lot of things in Illustrator in multiple locations, just like your windows are here. And then often over here, same thing with those. Uh, and remember this is control panel. Okay, so now let's go into a little bit more of this control panel and I'm gonna go quite quick and just show some very random things. I'm gonna move this guy over. Um, dive into how to do that in a little bit. I'm going to shrink him down. Don't even worry about that right now. So top of control panel and also notice actually before I go into that when I had this guy highlighted look how things change and now it looks like this in my control panel. So sometimes you're looking for something and it's not there and you're like where the heck is it at? It, sometimes it can be as simple as just clicking on the item so that the control panel loads all of the properties that you could change in this control panel for that item. So don't panic. Um, just remember that can happen a lot. One place I notice it a ton is when you're doing lines and you'll kind of see that in a little bit. Um, okay, so with this smiley face, when I click on it, you'll notice two different colors. Super important to understand. Um, this first color is called a fill. It's the fill of it, it's what, what the, sh the colors, the shapes color. So ours is kind of an orangey yellow. The next color you'll see, and it has this white square in it, it's called the stroke. And what that is is the outline. But again, this is verbiage that you need to start to understand. And like I said before, you can see almost everything in multiple spots. I, I can see right now three different locations where these colors show up that I could adjust them in. I can see them here in my control panel, I can see them here in my tools, and I can also see them over here in my appearance talking about fill and stroke. At any point you can click on this arrow and change them. I can make it a red. I could make this green for watermelon. <laughs> kind of looks like a watermelon. Watermelon. Okay, so your stroke, you've got that. Now see this number next to stroke. What that's talking about is how thick is that line. So right now you can see this green watermelon smiley face has a 10 stroke. Watch when I go up. Now it's at 28. Um, you can adjust that. You can also see it here. Sometimes I love a tiny, tiny little line. You couldn't see it right now, but if this was black, you could see it much better. Oh, notice when I chose black, that line is still green. You can't see it very well. But do you see how that line is still green? That's because I did not have it selected. You have to have your item selected using your main selection tool or nothing happens to it. Just because you're changing uh, properties within your workspace, it doesn't know what to apply it to. You could be talking about this eyeball or you could be talking about this circle. So now I've got it uh, selected. Now I'll change it to black. It did indeed change it to black. So all is good. Um, you're gonna practice a lot of these tools. And again, this, this lesson's very small, so you're gonna learn certain things. It's gonna take maybe even years to master most of the tools in Illustrator. It is not a quick shot. You can always click on stroke. You can also change the weight there. There's a lot of other things you can change. The cap, you wouldn't see a cap right now because there's no cap showing. That means an end. So like, for example, on this smiley face, the cap is how the end of that line is going to look. Right now it's a straight line. We'll call it a butt cap. <laughs> uh, you could round it. Notice how it did a nice little rounding. If I click on this stroke and I change something though, nothing's going to happen because I do not have it selected. Make sure it's selected. Notice how it's highlighted blue um, and I can see it there. Okay. 
So you can change things here, corners. You can even make dash lines. There's just really so much you can do. That's kind of a weird look, but you get the gist that you can change a lot of stuff. Okay, you can also change kind of the basic makeup. So let me undo, very important command uh, to understand with your keyboard is Command Z, undo, undo, undo. I'm just going Command Z, Command Z, Command Z, Command Z, back, back, boom. Okay, you can also change to different profiles in your control panel. Um, this will come up in more advanced things, but you can change it to a little pointy edge and you have to play with things. You can also make them look like different kind of brushes. Um, there's lots of different ones. You can even build some. You can also change its opacity. You can change it down to 50%. That's kind of weird, right? Now it looks gray. That's a more advanced thing to understand, but black grays are considered a um, a value of black so 50% of black is just a form of gray that's why that looks so gray turn that back up or 43% of black okay there's also things like a line now I want to select both eyeballs and I want to make sure they're top aligned properly I can, with my selection arrow, and I'm going to go into more of these tools in a minute, I can click, I can then come over, I can hold down shift, then I can click again, and now I have both selected. At that point, I could come in, and if you hover over things, you'll start to notice it tells you what they are. I still don't always remember every little thing. Um, I want to vertically align the tops which they were already, but let's pretend they weren't there. Now they're really wonky. Another way you can make a selection other than the shift key is you can click, hold, drag. Now I've also selected the circle. Say you don't want that selected. Now I can hit shift, click on just the circle, and then I have just the two eyes. It, you will find which way works best for you. Sometimes I need one way, sometimes I need another way. Um, it, it will come more naturally as time goes on. All right, align. There, now you can see how that works. Um, I'm not going to go much into this guy. And transform. Notice those X and Y coordinates, even your angles, just like geometry. Remember, this is vector, very, very geometry. It's even telling me that the width is 1.2, yada, yada, inches by 0.35 inches. Um meaning this square, both of them. That was why that was kind of big. Okay, so that's your control panel. And again, it can change depending on which object you've selected. See how it's changing on each of those. Uh, next, let's make sure I'm not missing anything. <clears throat> you can also, like if you just a few ways that we can make selections, and again, I'm using Command minus and Command plus, is that I can click and drag, I could select everything. I could also go Command A, which selects everything. Sometimes I do need that. Um, then you can move things around. Now, something that I think especially beginners get very um, impatient with is selecting single pixels. So like this line is just one pixel. Now granted, we told it to kind of look like more pixels by adding stroke properties and a, and a special brush, but it's just one pixel. So I get a lot that are like, why aren't things moving properly? I can't move them. I'm not, I'm not getting on it or I'm messing it up. You have to be very patient. Click, make sure you see it. Click then in hold and drag and move it around okay next let's dive into tools let me go through those quite quickly so we've got selection tool I've already gone over that direct select this is huge this little demo is showing us thanks Adobe um, but what it does is moves the points so your selection tool 
your main selection tool is going to move an entire object. Your direct selection tool is going to move tiny points. So let's see what that means. When I have my selection tool, I see this entire circle. When I have my direct select, now notice I've got these like five blue dots. What does that mean? Well, these dots, these four dots around the outside make up that shape. This one's representing the center point. I can select individual dots by clicking. Now notice I also have anchor points. Um, these handlebars manipulate how things look. We can get all over the place. I'm going to undo. I'm going to command zero to pop my artboard back into place. If you ever lose your artboard, command zero is a great key to understand. Okay, I'm going to zoom in, command plus, and you could select this one over here. You can push, you can pull, you can make different shapes. You have to be very patient. It takes a while. This is not an easy trick. It's like learning how to use a bunch of workshop tools. You don't just walk into a workshop with 25 different tools and know how to use every single tool right off the bat. It may take you years to understand best usage practice for each tool. Like if it was a drill and a hammer and a screwdriver, you know, there's different things to do with each of those. Same thing with Illustrator. It, it takes a little bit to learn each of these tools. Next tool, we've got Magic Wand. To me, that's much more of a raster item. I, I'm not even going to go into that. It, the same goes for this lasso tool. I, I use this in Photoshop. In the Photoshop lessons, you'll definitely see it a lot more. Um, pen tool, huge. It makes points, but you get to be very, very custom with them. Whereas I use this circle tool for making this. So this guy I could make, well, let's make him a crown. A really giant crown. Now if I want to round out a piece of the crown, you can click, hold, drag. If I want to close the shape, you have to go back to your very beginning point. You can't just end it way out here. It's not closed. Notice when I get back to my very first point, I have this little circle. Perfect. Click. Done. I can change colors. I can make it look like a crown. I can shrink it down by holding shift and pulling it in from a corner point with my main selection. And I can give him a funny little crown. It's going to look kind of ridiculous, but it's okay. I can get better with my points because I'm like, oh, you know, that should come down more. Eh, there's this crown. A little bit better. I can move points. Now notice, I'm not just going in and pulling points. I like to click and see them. I like to then click so I know I have my singular one that I need. And then I like to click a whole third time, hold, and move it when I need to. That is a patience thing. You, you need to be patient when learning how to manipulate points. You will gain speed with that. You will not have speed at first. Um, next, curvature tool. I'm not going to go into some of these. These are much more advanced tools. You can learn them as you go on. I'm going to give you the most basics. Um, type tool. Let's call him a king. Click, release, type my thing in, go back. And notice I go back a lot. You can also learn how the shortcuts, so that's what this little V is. At any point, I could hit V, like if I was down here on this circle, I could hit V and notice it pops up to my selection tool. So I'm going to click on him, I'm going to bring him down, I'm going to shift and drag him larger, scale him up, and he's the king. I could change it. Maybe it's a queen. I don't know. And boom. Okay. Next, we've got a line. Yep, sometimes you'll draw lines. Again, a lot. You can accomplish a lot of the same things in multiple different ways, just like you can see a lot of the same things in multiple different spots. So I can draw a line. Um, where do I want to draw a line at? Let's draw a little nose. You can start to draw your line, click and hold. I can hit shift. It's going to make that line straight. 
Now, it looks like I have a line. But if you notice in my control panel and in my tools panel and in my windows of appearance, they've got a red line through that. What that means is there is no color associated with the fill or the stroke. You need to apply a stroke to see it. So let's make this one go back to green. You can see it pretty well. Cancel. Selection tool. Click off of that. I see my little nose. I can click on him again. I can make him much bigger. Whatever. Um, your shapes. Okay, another thing. Notice how you've got some tools over here that have this little triangle at the bottom. That means there's a lot more things underneath it. More advanced. Not going to get into those right now. These are important. Look at all these shapes you could build. I can do a, a square. Now, my square can turn into anything rectangular unless I hold shift and then it's no matter where I am it's going to keep it as a perfectly ratioed square. Go back to my selection. I want to move him. Why didn't he just move? Because he only has a stroke, so there's no value in the, the center. So when I'm trying to grab it, it's almost like there was nothing there. I got right on the center point for that one. It's almost like there's nothing there. So, be again, you have to be very patient with selecting singular pixels. You can always swap your pixels of fill and stroke. So I'm going to swap them. Now it's on the inside. I can bring it over here, shift down, make it smaller, and make some little gems in this queen's, change its colors, whatever. There's so much you can do. I have to go back to the selection tool all the time because notice I'm doing quite a few clicks to get myself back easily select this. We'll make that yellow. Let's make one more. <clears throat> you can also use your arrows on your keyboard. Like now I'm clicking down. I'm clicking up. Um, that's up to you. Now, my whole thing has gotten off of this page. I'm going to Command A, select all. I'm going to grab it move it. Now I can see everything. Okay, I'm not going to go much into the paintbrush, but it's there. It can do all kinds of things. Um, I'm not going to go into a lot of these tools. They get more advanced. Your scissor tool, that one's pretty cool when you need to cut things. My favorite reason to use a scissor tool is when I need like a perfect half circle. So I go in, I make a circle using shift, a perfect circle. Shift. So if I don't have shift, I can get an oval. Shift, circle. I want it to go to the fill. And I can use my scissors, and you're going to do this in the, in the very first lesson. And now I've got a perfect half circle. So you can click, click, and then I had to delete the other part. Okay. Rotating. Let's do a square with shift so it's perfect. You can rotate this way. I personally use my selection a lot. I hover on the corners. Now these squares are different than these squares. I notice I have one point selected. I'm hitting shift. Now I have two points out of four selected. Now I have three points out of four selected. I could move just those three points. Okay, scale tool, same thing. I like to use my um, shift and my main selection, but you'll learn a little bit more about doing some scale tools. Um, I do like this guy, so let's show it to you. If you have a straight line or just any line, make sure you have a color. There's no color on this one. So you're like, where'd it go? 
Okay, now I can see it. Go over here, grab this width tool. I do love this tool. And you can pull and make, it's very similar to the profiles that I showed you before, but it gives you a lot more control over exactly what it's gonna look like. You've got free transform, um, that's, again, and it's like, why isn't this selecting? Remember what I told you about, oops, I don't mean all of that. Um, free transform, there's just a lot that goes on with that. I'm holding shift on mine because I want it to be nice and perfect. Shape builder, I'm not going to go into that as much. It's much more advanced perspective far more advanced. My biggest advice for that is if you click on it and you're like, oh my gosh, I did not mean to, how the heck do I get this off? You have to reselect it and then exit. It's so strange how that is. Um, mesh tool, that's more advanced. We'll get into that. That um, allows you to do some pretty advanced coloring and shape building um, of things. Gradient, you can add a gradient. I need to take those two lines off of that so I can show you this gradient. You can add a gradient to anything. Click, oh my gosh, where'd the red go? Well, now it's filled with a gradient. Notice my fill is a gradient. And it's over here. I have a window, a gradient window. I can manipulate those colors to be, frankly, any color I really want them to be. Red, orange. They could be a linear which are what a straight line they could be radial like here you can manipulate them again this is techniques you're going to learn eyedropper when you're trying to get a color an exact color of something you can select this and notice how this changed to whichever i was on blend that's advanced so is symbol so is column graph builders Artboard, this white piece of paper is the artboard. It, I have it set up to a letter, eight and a half by 11. <clears throat> um, and that can be changed. Um, but you have to be careful. You know, th these need to be set up in a certain way depending on the specs for an assignment, the specs for a paid customer. Um, it's very important, you know, is it going to be a poster? Is it going to be a postcard? So your artboard, you can change, the, adjust the artboard, but you have to be very um, cautious with that, and it needs to be with a lot of uh, thought behind it. Okay, almost done. Slice tool, that's very similar to the scissors. I use scissors a lot more than slice. Hand tool, this guy's awesome when you are zoomed into something. And you want to move around, you can use that hand tool. Now, if you're on some other tool, I love knowing this because I use it a lot. The space bar is an automatic hand tool. So I usually don't click on the hand tool over here. I just usually click on the space bar. Click colon and drag around. Um, zoom, I, same with the, same as the hand tool. I don't use this tool as much as I do command plus and command minus. Here's my stroke, or here's my stroke, here's my fill, um, here's baseline if you had to get back to it. Again, nothing changed because I had nothing selected. But if I had this selected and I had done that, it would have changed to your baseline black and white. Okay, there's your main tools. Um, windows. There are so many windows that it will take you a long time to learn all of these, but some of your basics are your type. You can change a lot of things. You can have different font families. You can have some font families. Let's see. Some font families have a huge variety of of sub levels that you can choose. So like my queen, there's nothing for this Myriad Pro. Which one were we just on? Doesn't necessarily matter. Let's go see this guy. Nope, nope of course there's nothing for that one. Mm. 
just don't even want to use that example. Um, I do like this guy. It gives you some different options. Avenir. Uh, you can adjust the size here, the font size. It's going to get a lot into kerning, which is the spacing <clears throat> um, between individual letters. There is letting, which is the spacing between lines of text. That's why those two A's are on top of each other. And then there's also tracking, which is the spacing between the letters. Notice how it's spreading out, but the actually it kind of is an optical illusion. The letters aren't actually getting any bigger. They're just spreading out. Windows. Um, other windows that are important. Your paragraph is also here. Um, you know, I have one single letter or one single word, so you're not necessarily seeing a big difference, but you can adjust things there. Gets into more advanced typography. Typography is really the art of type. It's far more advanced. Uh, let's see what else. Oh, uh, layers. Huge. Your layers panel. Go to your layers. Make sure your layers are on properly. So your layers are huge. You have to understand your layers. Uh, notice that each of these items are made up of sub layers of layer one. So these are considered sub layers. This little black ellipse is one of the eyeballs. I can show it or hide it. And I do that all the time to make sure I'm working on the right thing. Uh, here's my crown. Here's my funny nose that I made. Ooh, I could show that guy again. Um, and you can always make new layers with this plus sign. You have to understand working on layers because if you're trying to build depth in a more 3D item, let's just like say, oh, this queen figure is going to be behind a wall, a fence, something, we'll call it a fence. I can put that on its own layer. Maybe it's not a fence, maybe it's a plexiglass. That does by the way. And I adjust the opacity so that you can see a little bit of everything through it. Again, that gets more advanced. It takes a while to learn why you're going to do some of these tools. Um, you can always move these guys. Be careful though. If I'm trying to move that circle, this plexiglass is on top, literally on top of that circle. So when I'm clicking right here thinking, oh, I'm gonna grab his, this queen's face and move it, uh, nope, you're selecting the top object. And right now the top object is the plexiglass. So again, start to understand that. You could always lock a layer. If you're like, oh gosh, I really need to move that face, that's making me crazy. Now I can click right there because I've locked that plexiglass layer and, he, and it can't move. Okay, let's look over my notes and make sure. Okay, last thing I wanna show you real quick is a little bit more about layers and vector. So this is a great example. Again, shout out to Dylan, awesome student. This is um, at the State College of Florida campus and it's just a beautiful um, kind of modern, modern take on it. So this is vector artwork even though it looks so kind of realistic, especially with these stairs, like, oh, did they just posterize a photo? Nope, he literally penned out every single one of these shapes and objects. And a great way to see that is changing the view to outline and look at all those little tiny pieces that make this up. Um, I think that's so interesting to look at. Another thing, check out his layers. He's got so much in here. Let's see where you can. Top pillars. He's building on pillars. Stairs. There's a stairs. Foreshadow. I'm probably not seeing it because it's over here. Um, railing. And just building on that. And sometimes you'll have to move things to different layers. You can always command cut something so let's just say let's say you wanted to move some of these pillars and you're like oh my gosh I can't make them work they need to be in a different layer on top of something you can always command X it's gonna cut it makes it looks like it disappears 
Oh my gosh, where'd it go? You can make a new layer. It could be on top, it could be on bottom. You can always move those layers. Um, and then you can Command Shift V. That pillar popped right into place, but now he's on his own little layer. Um, that's super important. Let me show you one more example of that. Let's just say we need to move this tree. Let's lock these layers. I can grab these trees and you're like, I, I need just this tree and I want to make another tree closer because I'm going to utilize all that artwork. I'm going to command C for copy. This one I'm not going to cut. I'm not just moving this guy. I'm going to paste him in another layer. I'm going to paste a copy in another layer. I'm not just moving him. So I can make a new layer right on top. My copied tree. I can command paste. It's going to paste it wherever. And then I can always move it. Oh yeah, there's a tree. And I want it to be wherever. We'll say right here. Now, let's say that really bugs me. I'm, sh I'm shifting, scaling it up. Maybe it really bugs me. I, I need this to be behind there. So you got to find your railing. Where's that railing? And you've got to move it behind that. So let me look. There's that railing. I've got to move it right behind there. And now it's popped behind the railing, but it's still in front of this guy. So you have to rearrange layers. So don't forget about Command X for cutting an object and fully then Command Shift pasting with Command sh Shift V into a whole new layer. Um, the Command Shift V pops it right into the same place. But if so, if you've done a lot of work to get it into a very particular spot, or you can always Command. C for copy and then command paste for pasting it and then you can always move it around um, but you do have to make sure you're selecting the proper layer that you want it to go into so I hope that goes a little bit into layers great example of vector um, now here's a piece of both vector and raster let me zoom in with command plus and minus and notice how pixelated those square little pixels of that girl are versus this little cute face of this dot on the J of Jubilee. She is raster based. She was imported into Illustrator. This is vector based. It's Illustrator. It's math. It, it, remember, it can be sharper. So sometimes they can live in the same thing, the same um, piece of artwork. And depending on I typically honestly work in Illustrator a lot more than I do in Photoshop because I'm I'm building a lot more with um, logos and type and I prefer to work on those in Illustrator so that I have a lot more versatility in scaling up and scaling down and whatnot. Um, but this this photo, if and it was edited, was edited in Photoshop and then imported into here. Now notice when I do view outline for this, you see certain things, but it's like the girl disappears. Well, yeah, that's because it's just a photo, this rectangular photograph, and it was placed into there. Again, showing that it was not vector-based, um, even though it's all in one file. So I hope that helps. Again, going over vector versus raster, your... Um, menu bar, your control panel, your project file tabs, your toolbar or tool panel, and your windows and how you can find those if you don't see one over there. Um, and just some of your very, very basics with fills and strokes and manipulations of items and using your selection tool as well as your layers. Hope that helps.